Hello, today we are making ceramic portrait planters. Gather your supplies, clay, newsprint, paper clips, popsicle stick, water, sponge, and a drawing. Start with your plan and divide it into fractions. Step one, you're going to create two pinch pots. Begin by reserving a small amount of clay that you will use later for 3D items. I'm writing the word save on here so you remember to set it aside and then you're going to use the rest of your clay to create your pinch pots. Here's some examples on ways to divide your clay into parts. The piece of clay you are setting aside for later can be used to make earrings, flowers, and different accessories you might want on your pot. My pots will be divided into one-third and two-thirds shape. Use the popsicle stick to cut your chunk of clay into two pieces. Now you're going to start making your pinch pots. Use the table to press down on the clay and then your hands to roll it into a ball. Keep rolling and smoothing it in between your hands, keeping your hands curved and using the pressure from your hands, pushing inwards as you roll the clay in your hands. Keep checking it and making sure that you're trying to get the best sphere possible. Now it's time to do that to the other piece of clay. Using the table to help get the clay into a more rounded shape, then putting the clay into your hands and rolling it into a sphere once again. When you have your two spheres, you'll notice that there might be some flaws on those spheres, and that's okay. They will disappear. You're going to identify the largest flaw, and that's where you're going to begin pinching your pot, and it will definitely disappear into the pot. So you see I have uh, two larger lines in the middle of my pot, and now I can press my thumb into that about one inch. Okay, So I'm going to use my thumb to get started, and don't go very deep. So start with just about an inch in and keep your hands curved while you do this, keeping the non-dominant hand holding the clay in a curved position that will maintain its round shape. Use your dominant hand to pinch, making a crab claw with your thumb and your four fingers. Do not pinch with the tips of your fingers, that will make dents. So keep your hands in kind of a mitten position Try not to make ridges on the walls. Okay, The clay is very soft, so it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure to get it into that shape. You want all the walls to be even thickness, so check those with your hands as you go around. The bottom of your pot should not be thicker than the sides of your pot. Tap your clay onto its base a couple times, and then turn it upside down and tap it on the front, the top half. This will even out the height of your bowl, and you can uh, see if it is uneven and make sure it's not going to be rocking and rolling around. Okay, So you're going to do these same steps to your smaller piece of clay. So once you have uh, made two pinch pots and tap them on the ground to make sure they're even, you're going to put them together. So this is where we learn how to slip and score. And scoring is when you are scratching the surface of the clay and slip. Um, in our case, we're using water instead of traditional slip because our clay is so wet, we don't need uh, slip. So you're going to use your paper clip tool to scratch the surface of your clay, going both directions, and that makes it so that when those two pieces of clay are put together, they will really bond and glue together. Always remember that you need to score both pieces of clay you wish to join, as well as add water to both sides. This is very important. If you only do it to one side, you run the risk of having it pop off later, and it will not stand up. Once you attach those two pieces together, apply some pressure to the bottom of your clay pots, flip it over, and do the same thing so that they are. you make sure that they are um, going to be really stuck together in the places where they're joined. Once you've done this, you're going to use your paper clip to poke holes through both pieces of clay. And these are 
drainage holes because later you're going to get to plant uh, a succulent inside your pot and it needs to have a few holes for drainage. Wring out your sponge. Wring it out really well. Should not be dripping wet. Mostly dry. Um, and then using the round part of your paper clip, you can use that to first even out any of the uneven sections and clean those up. So if your walls aren't completely even, you can even them out a little bit, removing little bits of clay with the rounded end of your paper clip. And once you've done any of those evening out Tool, use the tools to even it out. You're going to use the sponge. Um, make sure you're holding your clay at all times and not just sponging it because it is soft and you will dent your piece. So add some support with your hands while you are smoothing it. Now you're going to do this to the entire pot. So uh, apply medium pressure with the sponge holding your clay pot the entire time to keep it steady and do this to the entire piece. Now take a look at your design and use the paper clip to sketch out onto your clay and decide where those main lines are going to be on the outlines of your design. Um, most likely it will be where the hair and the face uh, are separated and also where the clothes, the lines of the clothing. I decided to add some ears on my face and I'm carving in the features of the face with my paper clip. As you do this, there will be little teeny bits of clay that appear as you're carving because the clay is so soft, so make sure to clean those up as you go. Now I'm using my extra piece of clay that I saved to create a flower. And these are my 3D items, so this is the next step, is to work on your 3D sections. So you need to sculpt those, and then you're going to score those and slip those onto your clay piece. and. Now you're going to use smaller pieces of clay and the dowel to roll them out thinner and you can draw those onto your clay with a pencil and with other tools. I created some flowers and some leaves that I'm going to use to put as decoration for her hair because Frida always wore flowers in her hair. I also decided to create some simple earrings to attach. Now you're going to use your tools uh, to create the textures and the patterns that might be on her clothing or the lines in her hair. So these, all these things need to be done at the end so that they don't get smudged when you're handling your pot. So you can use a pencil, you can use the paper clips, any tools to draw these on and stamp in or create different patterns and lines to add texture and detail. Make sure to remove any of the extra little bits, and then you're going to take your tools and adjust any lines that might uh, not be as visible. So you can do this to the face and anywhere else. Next, you're going to check the shape of your pot. As you're laying it on its side, it might have gotten warped. Make sure to flip it over and re uh, put in any holes that might have um, disappeared. Okay, so check the shape of the bottom of your pot and then you're going to use a pencil or a paper clip to write your name on the inside of your pot. And if you want to include the year, you can do that too. The next thing you're going to do is crumple up some newsprint paper and that is going to support the base of your clay pot so that it doesn't collapse as it's drying. It's also going to help absorb some of the moisture from the inside of the pot because the air would be trapped inside it. Okay, So you want to make sure it's flush so that your pot still is, uh, is going to stand up and not tip over. Check the shape one more time on the top of the pot. Things do get warped, so you need to make sure that it's going to dry in the correct position. Once you're finished and everything looks good, you're going to put it on your piece of cardboard, put your name on the cardboard, and your teacher's name on the cardboard. Ask your teacher where to place your clay and carry it with both hands very carefully. Check your work when it's on the cart and make sure that it's not tippy and that everything looks good because it has to be ready to be fired. So your clay is going to be put in a kiln, and the next time you see it, it will be ceramic or bisque fired, and we will be able to add glazes, and which is actually color, to our pots.